Hi, this is Ben Bryant to demonstrate the first object XML editor called Foxy. I'm on the download page for it on the firstobject.com website. The big download here is for the installer. You can also grab just the standalone executable, which works for portable purposes. I'm just going to click to download the installer and just click through so you can see some of the steps I go through. Now I'm in the editor. So I'm going to open a play.xml file that's 245k. One of the first things that's nice to do is to format it. You can see that here on the tools menu or just press F8. There's also a tree, tree view. One of the features of Foxy is that I can customize the tree view by taking a sub-element or attribute and displaying its value up next to the parent element. In this case I'd like to display the act title next to the act element. So I go into tools preferences and under tree customizations type the element name followed by the sub element or attribute. You can actually do multiple levels to pull a value up and display it next to an element. See how now the the act title is displayed next to the act which can help me in navigating through the document. That setting will remain in the editor now every time I bring in an XML document with corresponding tag names. You can run functions on the tree where I could copy the entire act and paste it in. I can also delete by pressing the delete key just made it into quite a small document and I can undo those changes I made. Even including the formatting. The way that I was copying additional acts is the way that I created a much larger 50 megabyte XML file. So I'm going to open up here. It takes about over a second to load and parse a 50 megabyte file on this machine. It's not a very fast machine. In, in order to create this file I had duplicated the acts many times. See there's a, a thousand and twenty-five acts. I can also format a 50 megabyte file just fine, but when I do initiate it it says that it, it won't be able to undo. There, it took uh, 3.7 seconds to format it and another second to parse it again and display it. I've shown you those two documents. The third document I want to show has multiple languages. I can look at the Unicode values of characters by going to char Unicode. It lists the Unicode code points, the ranges, and the UTF-8 encoding. I can also display other encodings by setting the encoding of the document. You can't see it inside the window, but I'm going up to select Chinese Traditional, which is Big 5. All it does is inserts the XML declaration at the top, and now when I look at the Unicode encoding, it's going to add an additional piece of information, the encoding for Big 5. Notice that this character, for example, in Big 5 is encoded as C5E9, but if I change the encoding to Chinese Simplified, GB2312, and run char Unicode again, that same character is encoded as F377. Finally, I wanted to show how you can write scripts. Let me indent it again. 
and I'm going to go in to a scene here. And notice how in each speech it starts with the speaker. I'd like to find out all the speakers in this play and how often they speak. So I can go into Generate Program and gather unique values. Let me remove the bottom panel. This is a very short program that gathers all the unique values of speaker. All I have to do is run it, which is F9, and it will give me a list of the documents that are open to use as an input parameter here for the document that it is querying. Click OK for play.xml. And the results show up down here. So I can see that, for instance, Cleopatra spoke 204 times. Notice that also Mark Antony spoke 204 times. I thought that was an interesting correlation there, that both of the main characters had spoken the same number of times. I can also step through this program to see what it's doing. And this shows the real power of scripting inside of Foxy. By pressing F10, it uh, prompts me again for the input, and it brings up a panel to display my the status of my debugging. Now I'm going to loop through every speaker. Notice that it has gone to the first speaker. I can actually look in this document by clicking on it here. That brings up the document and shows me where that current position is. Now I'm going to take the data of the speaker element and put it into the sval string. See the sval here is now the name of the speaker. This is how I look it up to see if I've already stored this speaker in my result list. Of course there's nothing in my M list yet so it won't be able to restore that position and instead I'm going to add it to my M list. And let's look at my M list. We can show the, uh, the input document and my output side by side. Don't have much real estate here to work with. But now when I step over this line, you'll see it's added that speaker to my output. And now I'm going to set the number of times that speaker has spoken and save that position based on the name, the speaker's name. Now I go to the next speaker, which is Cleopatra. Attempt to restore. It wasn't there. So I'm going to add it to this list. Set the number to 1. I found the next speaker, and it's Mark Anthony. He hasn't been found yet. Add him to the list. Next speaker is Cleopatra again. This time I will be able to restore the position to Cleopatra. See it found it in the output list. I'm going to increment the count to 2. And so on. I can just hold down the F10 key and watch it as it works. See it's building the list of outputs and it's running through all the speakers. One additional thing I can do is step into the byte codes, and that's with Control F10. So I'm just going to close these watch variables. Press Control F10. It's line number 6, which is the while statement. Another feature here is help. Click on any function name and press F1. Here I can go to another function, set a tribute. All functions are documented in the help system. You can even type in a word such as paths to find all the documentation on paths. Thank you for your time.